ChatGPT, a state-of-the-art conversational AI model. AI is currently going viral. Artificial intelligence and the new Chat GPT program. Chat GPT has blown my mind. Holy shit! This this is my job. This is what we do. This is going to change the role of doctors in healthcare. Hey there! In this video, we're going to be talking about Chat GPT, an incredibly advanced chat box developed by OpenAI. With ChatGPT, you can hold natural, engaging conversations on any topic that you can think of. Whether you're looking for the answers to your burning questions, need some advice, or just want to chat, ChatGPT has you covered. And the best part is, is that it's constantly improving and learning. So with each conversation that you have with it, it will be better than the last. Get amazed by the power of ChatGPT. Now that intro was written by ChatGPT and I'm, I'm mind blown. And this thing has been going viral on TikTok, on Twitter, and rightfully so. It's basically like a Google if you can have a conversation with it. Google, when you go on Google, you do a search, right? It comes up with pages, comes up with 10 pages and gives you search results, but it doesn't really make up an answer. ChatGPT on the other hand, takes um, information from those pages and comes up with an answer that it thinks is right. Um, it's incredibly interesting to see and there's been so many different use cases that I haven't even thought of. Um, I'm a medical student so I've been using it for my basic uses. Emails, letters, um, I've seen it being used for patient diagnoses. I've seen it being used to make flashcards. So I want to show you all of that and I'm really excited. And uh, I don't even want to continue with the intro anywhere. I want to jump right into the video and that's what I'm going to do. So please stick along and let's get into the video. Now, just for fun, I'm going to be asking ChatGPT to make some diagnoses. And I'm going to be taking some two cases from uh, the case files. You've probably seen it. It's case files, internal medicine, and it's 60 realistic cases. Like I'm not going to do all 60, but obviously, but um, they're realistic cases. And um, I'm going to be using case two. I'm not going to show you the actual case from the textbook because of copyright. So I just copy pasted it, but let's see if it can make a diagnosis. I love this. This is crazy. So the most likely diagnosis is hypercholesterolemia, and that is true. Um, this patient, I checked the answers before doing this, and case two, the answer is hypercholesterolemia. I'm gonna be leaving the links to the files, and I'm gonna be adding some screenshots for you to view about what I actually copy pasted, and you can do it for yourself. I really encourage you to do it yourself, actually. So now I'm gonna be doing case four, and let's see if it can come up with a diagnosis. I'm, I'm mind blown. What I actually, what I really love about this is that the most likely diagnosis is heart failure and the patient's symptoms, inc including worsening exertional dyspnea, difficulty sleeping, swollen feet, are consistent with heart failure. Like it's telling you why it thinks it's heart failure, which is very, uh, it's very cool. And physical, it also ties in physical findings. So such as bibasilar, inspiratory crackles, and S4 heart sound, I think it should be S3. Anyways, a systolic murmur on the right sternum will also support a diagnosis of heart failure. So this is something you would expect like a med two, you know, med three person to come up with and it's come up with this so fast. Um, just for fun, I'm gonna take some step three questions that I found, um, they're sample questions, I'll link them down below as well and I've copied some of them, hold up. So let's go with the 27 year old and I'll just ask, I'm asking it for the diagnoses because um, I feel like it can answer, if it can answer this one, it can probably answer the other ones because the other ones are just like mechanism of action or what, um, like what, what drug you would give related to a specific bacteria. So let's see what this is. I would say this is correct. Like it, it, it the answer is narcoplex, uh, narcolepsy, but uh, cataplexy is a type of 
narcoplexy narcolepsy so i mean that's pretty good going and it's off of a question stem there's all obviously these question stems give you all the relevant information um but i would say it's pretty good like i don't i haven't seen something like this so i'm really excited um now get into some actual use cases that i'll be using this for so the biggest thing i'll be using this for is emails i hate emails and they've they've i don't know who actually likes emails i especially don't and i always need some kind of sample i'm always googling sample emails like simple emails i get stuck with so um like just this yesterday morning i had to make an email um and i'll, I'll type this for you so write an email for a clinician wishing them happy holidays and a happy new year while also suggesting that you would be interested in researching with them again if there's an opportunity and boom we have an email put together okay if you're ever stuck this just helps you give you an idea and that's basically what i need it for i, I love this obviously it needs tweaking don't copy and paste this exactly you tweak it tailor it but it gives you like a good starting point um with these kind of things um the next thing i could use this for is flashcards so let's say this is your slide you want to learn the muscles of the inner ear let's ask it to uh, make cue cards from the information here Like, doesn't that just make your life so much easier when you have something like this? Like, you, all you did was copy and paste it. Like, like, you can try this, like, try it and see where you go. Obviously, maybe, maybe like, a, it did it so easily that maybe I gave it too easy of a problem to do. But this is, sa this saves time, right? So, you can make flashcards with this. Um another tool that i will be using this for you can write letter like you can if you are applying for something you can use it to write letters so for example let's go into i'm going to be applying for residency apps soon Vera. obviously it's going to come up with a generic letter um but it's something that can give you a starting point half of these let like if you can ask for a longer letter you can ask you can ask it to elaborate so um, write a personal statement I actually have to write a personal statement for hours so I'm interested to see what this comes up with honestly not bad not bad like you could take one or two sentences from this Lastly, I think what has this typing, I just can't believe. So it's telling you, I'm also drawn to the Irish medical education system because of its emphasis on hands-on learning. That's literally what I wrote in my statement. Oh man, this is great. I was actually gonna reword one of my statements. So here, lastly, it can just reword your writing. So. This is actually from my personal statement to Ireland and can you better, can you reword this? Like it's re, I use that for my personal statement and it's rewording it way better. One of, I don't know why I said by far my work, like why didn't I just say one of my most rewarding experiences was working with this company. Wow. So you don't always have to, you, this is not a copy paste game. Um, you could just use it to reword. Lastly, I just want to go over some disclaimers. So I don't think, I don't know if this is the iPhone moment. It does feel like it. This is what Sam Altman had to say about this. Chat GPT is incredibly limited, but good enough at some things to create mis a misleading impression of greatness. 
it's a mistake to be relying on it for anything important right now it's a preview of progress we have tons of work to do on robustness and truthfulness and i think that's very interesting so sam altman it uh, altman is um I think he's one of the founders of OpenAI. He's the leading engineer at OpenAI. And uh, it's interesting. I don't think this is an iPhone moment, but it sure feels like we're close. It sure feels like we're very close to something. And um, I think it's not going to take over. A lot of people are like, oh, it's going to take over physicians and stuff like that. I don't think so. I think it's just going to augment the day to day. Like a lot of the what people don't realize, like especially with physicians, like a lot of almost 80% of the day to day is just filling out notes, letters and doctors already have this. They have a word docs with macros in them and they're just copy pasting what 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 sentences they use regularly and they're being efficient so i think this is just another way to be efficient this will give um if this can save us time and we can devote more time to patients and we're less putting less time into like writing generic letters and stuff then you know i think that would be a great thing um another disclaimer is that i wouldn't recommend obviously don't copy and paste to what you get out of this um, I wish it could source uh, what where it's getting information from, but we're not there yet. So just be careful. I think eventually we're gonna get like uh, turn it in. You know how when you submit uh, an assignment, it tell it, the plagiarism checker thing. Like we're probably gonna get an AI checker uh, eventually, which will check to see if it's um, made by an AI or not. Um, I saw some people from OpenAI, they were saying that, you know, they would um, try putting like a cryptic thing uh, attached to whatever outcome you get. So it can you can tell if it's an AI or not, but we'll eventually get there. This is crazy because it's only been, uh, it's only come out December 7th. And I think like for people to really understand how powerful this is you need to figure, you need to go look at how it's being used in the wild how people on TikTok are using it how people on Twitter are using it and i think the results are incredible i'm using it for very like generic you know things that um help me that's not world changing but you know it's crazy what you can do um but yeah, I hope you found that useful. I hope that was really interesting. I'm really excited about this technology. It might not be the iPhone moment and uh, that's okay because it's literally helping me in my day to day work with emails. If I need to think of something, if I'm writing research papers or something, I can come up with uh, at least a starter point and I can go from there. I'm really excited to see what people do with it. Let me know, let me know down in the comments below what you're going to be doing with it. What if you're doing anything interesting and uh, what you think of it? Do you think that this could replace anybody? And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for uh supporting me and for watching it all the way through to this point uh i would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe i'll be covering more tech uh, more apps and whatever else i come along in my day today and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one